Show me how you get this full screen business. So, uh, right click, just like making full screen anyway, but it gives you display options. So we've been just doing display one. Now that we've done it, we can put it on any four of these. Oh, this is display one? Yeah. Oh, and these are display the four. Oh, I did it the wrong. Okay, we don't want display four. Display three? Uh, I think it's display two. Yeah, it's display two. Which we'll probably forget. Wow, that's uh, it's nice. That's this is as big a jump up as figuring out we can pull questions onto the screen. You think so? Well, I don't think it's that big. It's pretty chill. Okay. It saves us some time. It's gonna make things smooth. Are we going? I think so. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I click the stream. Why does it not have the countdown? On? I don't know. Did Hello. You know countdown? No, I didn't. Did you? Hello. Yeah, just do it now. <laughs> it's fine. Nobody's watching. Hello! You're in for a treat! Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays. To West! 6 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We got new hours! Because we're nerdish! And we're in our 20s despite our looks, so we gotta do things in the evening time over the summer. Correct, but not too late because, as Levi said, we're in our mid 20s. Not our early 20s. And not our late 20s. The mid 20s. So, yes, we're the Goldilocks of 20s. <laughs> That's right, I shouldn't have laughed. I gotta keep it cool, because this is our intro rep, where we keep things cool. We're very cool, so cool we might want a dance break. Hey, thanks for watching our dance break. Now, back to the really serious stuff. Like Brady and Levi and Brady too. We're the three members of the Nerdish crew. <laughs> that was perfect. We didn't plan that. Not at all. We don't plan anything. If you couldn't tell by this rap. That was the one thing we rhymed. That was the one thing. Which makes it a rap. Yes. All raps have one rhyme. We'll see you on Two West. Yes. Two West. 6, 7, 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Keep watching, because it'll turn into us, but probably not wearing the wigs. Yes, and we'll be much more responsive to whatever you have to say. You could ask us questions right now. We will not answer them. Also, we take no responsibility for anything we've done in this pre-recorded session. Yes. Any lost items, Nerdish is not responsible. Right, we don't have anything to do with it. We're very different people in the present than we are from when we're recording this video. You might say we are the pupae of Nerdish right now, and in the future we will be the moths. The because disgusting moths the gray moths. Yes, those gray moths that you hear the... Yeah. They're like the bats of the... Of the flying community. The wings are leathery. The leathery wings. Very leathery. They're basically butterflies, but we hate them. Yes. They're the rodents of butterflies. This is true. Right? Just like the ACT is the rodent of the SAT. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I don't agree with that at all. Whoa! Oh, we gotta put a restream. Oh boy. Hello, everybody. How are you all? This was just a disaster from the very beginning. Yes, I'm sorry. That's mostly my fault. Hmm. Let's get that up. Oh, we're getting up restream. So if you're commenting, sorry. We have no idea what you're saying. No uh, idea. But we can't possibly be blamed for not being able to handle ourselves. There we go. All right. You got something to say, just say it. All right, we'll respond to it. We might not like it, but we'll respond to it. Yeah, baby. hey -o. Um, please chat at us. Please chat at us. Is ready to correct some basic attention mistakes. Ah, I like these uh, italics message. Is yes, I find them very funny. Thinks about depression, right? Yes. <laughs> what? When, in what context did we do that again? I forget, but okay. it was very funny. Cool. Was Robe very the expert. I'm a the expert on robes. Yeah. Or robes. Be robes. Yeah. yeah, you'd be a expert. I'm probably wondering what a, what a expert is. It's what I am. How was the weekend? Rums. The weekend was very good. Oh, you didn't go water skiing. Did no, you? I did not. Okay. Uh, patri animals. Yes. Patri. What does that mean? It party. Probably means party. Party animals. But it might not. It Actually, might I did go to a patri. Yeah. Yeah. There was a patri Saturday night, which I believe you went to as well. 
friend of ours had a housewarming pay tree. You don't remember? Oh, that? I see now what you're doing. Yeah. Um, all right, let's do some questions. Right? We went to a housewarming pay yeah, tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like you're not I... taking me seriously. <laughs> it's just how Where, I feel. Do you know what the mouse is, Brady? Did you see it anywhere? The mouse? The mouse. It's on the, the screens. There it is. There we go. Let's go to a little Discord is action. The, is, is That's order, not what I wanted. Does the order make sense? Do we go? No, not here? at all. We should change that at some point. Yeah. I think it'd be fun. I don't know how to get... Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Good. Oh, look at that. All right. Roby, you got any good patries? They had, like, so patry hats. did on Nightish. Did we do this Lenify question? I think we did. Did we do this? Whatever this well, we was. We did, yes. Uh, yes, we did that as well. Generale. Very good. No announcements. No Great. So uh, maybe we can go on to Reddit? Not recently. No? Why don't you keep Roby Expert occupied? I'm going to go on Reddit. All right. Hey, Roby. So you've not been to a Patreon recently. Have you been to a, <clears throat> some kind of like a community gathering of some sort, perhaps in the neighborhood, perhaps for a fundraiser, perhaps with a school, after school, um, some kind of a community event? It doesn't have to be a, pa a patry. Well, the patries are good, too. Maybe like a block party. Mm -hmm. A Somebody block just, party. You know, just <laughs> cracked open the fire uh, hydrant, and then water comes out over in... Uh, the McMillan's yard. They've got a big projector screen set up and they're playing some movie from the 90s like Air Bud. Kids are just kind of jumping in around the fire hydrant water. Firemen are going to come. They're not going to be ang they're not going to be happy, but they'll get it because they remember when they were kids too. You know. It's like how can you be mad? You just that's your job though. Is you're in the position where you're supposed to be like, nah. -uh -uh. But inside, you're like, this looks fun. You know, but you can't say that. Because if you say that, then you, you just give them permission to do it a lot more often. And you got to keep those things in check. Every now and then, cracking open a fire hydrant, okay. Too much, you're wasting taxpayers' dollars. You're, you're still doing that, cracking it open once or twice. Um, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it's pain for itself in neighborhood joy, is what I always say. And I've always said that, and I always will say that. And if you ever catch me not saying that, then you are allowed to bring me to the guillotine and decapitate my head from my body. All right. Okay, so the ACT subreddit is only in a tizzy with uh, score the score report, yet? score release, yeah. They haven't come it out came out a day late and one dollar short. So wait, tomorrow? Yeah, it's coming out tomorrow now. Got but it. that's the only posting that's happening. Oh, jeez. Let's say T. Thank you. This looks fun. Yeah. Well, I want to see the comments because it might be fully explained. It might be fun for us, though. Yeah, I mean, definitely it's fully explained. Do kids even know how they can post their questions online? On our th yeah, I mean, people do it on Reddit all the time and on dis on Discord and stuff like that. So yeah. Like, huh? Uh, try to solve it, as in like try to solve their own problems, or on Reddit, or like, not send us their questions. What do you mean by that? Post their questions online, like, for us to solve. Um, Rob, yes, but I'm confused by what you're saying. The meaning is not clear. You should clarify it. <laughs> with Clearasil. Brought to you by Clearasil. Try to solve the problem themselves. This looks fun. Let's do this one. Yeah, but like, is it a problem that they decide not to send to us, or is it just a problem that they do send uh -oh. to us? That's not what we want. You're right. That's from that monitor. Yep. So I gotta change that. It's gonna be another moment. Technical difficulties. Oh, what? 
I don't like really that. Further, I don't solve it, laziness. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's lazy. Yeah, if you don't get it, you should. Oh, whoa! Wait, oh, they don't see that, do they? Uh, yeah, they do. They do. They do. They do. I'm turn that off. Oh, okay. sorry for that glimpse of infinity. Hopefully, we haven't blown out your brain completely. What? Levi, what is going on? What is going on is that it will not... Streamception. It's only allowing me to take... I don't know why. I have no idea why. It's only allowing me to do that monitor? computer. That monitor. You want me to try? Uh, yes, I do. Right. I'm going to do a question, though. So we have a regular hexagon. It's very regular. It's a little smushed, but assume it's not smushed. It's very regular. We have point A and point B. I don't know why yet. And we're saying that the length of AB, okay, so AB is 4. So measure of AB equals 4. That's easy enough to deal with. Uh oh. Hey, Brady. We're good. That's not good anymore. I don't you're, know why that's happening. You're fine. You're on. No, no, no. Oh, I, see. I, I need to see that problem. Oh, oh, Can I you see. pull up the Discord on this monitor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Jeez, this is a disaster. Okay. <laughs> you make, yeah, just go down to the bottom and pull it up. What a mess. Great. Okay. So this is back to normal now, yeah. at least. Uh, oh, wait. I'm um, sorry. Don't go to Discord. Can you go to the internet, uh, Firefox? Thank you. What is the area of the hexagon? So area hex equals what? OK, that's what we're trying to find, the area of this regular hexagon. Now, there is a formula for this, but I don't want to use it because you can reason it out. Um, Roby, do you, I like the streamception comment, by the way. Do you, do you know how you might find the area of this not at all squished hexagon, regular hexagon, with AB's side length being 4? Can you find the area? Do you know how to do that? There's a formula, but I don't necessarily want to use it. I would like to reason our way out of this. Hi, I got, ooh, hello, Noble Spartan. Got my SAT physics test in less than two weeks. What should I do to prepare, prepare, uh, prepare Have you for taken it? a practice one? You should take a practice SAT physics test uh, and see where you're at. Uh, when did you take physics? How did you do in it? And if you want, uh, we, we don't really do physics problems on our channel, but we also we do physics uh, tutoring for the subject test. He does. Well, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you reach out to us, and if you want to get some physics tutoring, we can set you up with that. Last three AP test. Okay. Uh, I don't really know how that how you would do on the subject test. You passed. Um, Got to take practice tests. Yeah, you know what? Send us a message. I probably can send you a practice test if we can't find one online. Roby, uh, triangles and squares. Where would the square be? Where would the triangles be? Where would the other squares be if you're talking about that? I'm happy to, to draw them in with a different colored marker. Maybe I should make this bigger. Didn't know it was going to happen in this problem, so I didn't make it that big. That's exactly as squished. Stupid. Yeah. Stupid. The way to go about this problem. Uh oh. There is another streamception. Ah. Ah. Sorry. Yeah, it's not working, right? Yeah, keep going. You're fine. Um. Okay, so what's nice is that you will have the center point on your regular polygon. Um, there, there's, a, there's a formula for all regular polygons, but we're going to do it this way. We're going to break this up into triangles. And so I like the triangles idea, Roby, but no squares. I'm not sure where, would, where you would put the square. Oh, I see maybe putting a square there and a square there. You could do it that way. That might be a little bit more difficult. In fact, I know it's a little more difficult. Um, but if we make this triangle here, right, then we can make triangles there and there and there and there, right? 
all of these triangles are identical, right? They have to be identical. Um, now, we're not sure what type of triangles they are. We know that this distance is the same as this distance. We also know we can figure out this angle measure, too. That angle measure will be 1 -sixth of 360 degrees because we have six triangles, right? And we're, we're splitting this, uh, this whole thing in six equal parts, which means that this is 60 degrees. But the nice thing is that because that is 60 degrees and this is isosceles, isosceles triangles means that the, the angles opposite the equivalent sides are going to be equivalent as well. So these two angles are the same as each other. So there's 120 degrees left over if we add up all these, right? It has to add up to 180. So now this is 60, so these have to add up to 120 and they have to be the same. So then these are also both 60 degrees. What we've now just proved, and it does need proving, is that this is, a, this is an equilateral triangle, which means that this is 4 and this is 4. And we don't actually need too much of that. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to draw in a line that needs lining. Wow, that's very strange. What is going on? Hey, man, it's all good. You took a picture? I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Look at that. Whoa. Maybe refresh that. Click click on that screen and then refresh it. Because we might actually have comments coming in and no no we don't. Okay, that's good at least. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong with that. Oh. Uh, I'm going to put this here. So from here I'm gonna use a blue marker and I'm gonna draw in a line right there. And that's going to be a right angle. So that's going to split this triangle exactly in half, right? This is 60 degrees here, that angle, right? All of these central angles are 60 degrees. So now this one is 30 degrees, and this is 30 degrees. Now let's think about this. Can we find the area of these triangles? If we can, awesome. Whoa, that is really, did you refresh it? It didn't really do much? Yeah, it didn't really do much. Maybe get, delete some, oh, you did. You already deleted some of those I display captures. Yes, I did. Okay. Interesting. Uh, maybe exit, restream, and then See, reopen it. I tried, but uh, it's doing that. Wait, dude, that's not restream. That's uh, d that's OBS that you tried to exit, and we're probably not streaming anymore. Or we might be. Are we still streaming? We're still streaming. Um, it was restream chat. See, the thing that's open. Oh, it does say restream, restream chat. chat. Yeah. Okay. What a mess. Um, okay, please let us know if we're streaming. Because we actually don't know. Oh, can I send you a link of someone that tried to teach math here on Twitch with little traction a few months ago? He has some interesting content. Not for SAT or ACT, but still. Yeah. Uh, yes, Roby, go for it. We, too, do not have much traction. Um, to find the area of this triangle here, we're just going to do this guy, the small, you know, the small 30, 60, 90 triangle. We know that this angle measure is 2, right? It'll be half of that 4, plus this is 30, 60, 90, so it's very special. And now we can figure out this, this side length here. That, if that, we call that h. So h is going to be 2 radical 3, right? Because that's how we, oh, it's just that monitor, it looks like, huh? Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know, dude. Maybe go to display capture and just refresh stuff. Or just go to display on there. So uh, search it in the thing. Oh, what a mess. Where's display? That's better. OK, what'd you do? I don't know. Keep talking. All right, great. This is h equals 2 red 3. That's the height of this triangle here. So now we basically have this little right triangle. I'm going to make it way bigger. We have this right triangle, and I've blown it up. This is 60 degrees. This is 30 degrees. You've blown it up, my lord. This is 90. And this is 4, 2, 2 rad 3. So the area of just this triangle, and I'll give it area of a little triangle, is going to be 2 times 2 rad 3 over 2, because that's how you find the area of a triangle, base times height divided by 2. So we will get 2 rad 3. But there are 12 of these triangles in here, right? We have these two here, and then we have another six sets of the big equilateral ones. So we're going to multiply this number by 12. So this whole thing times 12, because there are 12 of them, 
will give us our answer over there. So 12 times 2 rad 3 would be 24, 24 rad 3. And that is the answer to this question. That is the area of this hexagon. There is a, what do we got here? Roby sent the thing, the last stuff didn't quite work. Yeah, so Roby, um, if you send that to us in a Discord message or something, that would be better, or whisper it to us on Twitch. Um, we, we definitely don't have time to look at that tonight, um, but we can maybe look at it tomorrow or the next day um, if you send it to us in something more long-lasting than this chat specifically. I don't want to go find it after the fact. So if you just send it in a whisper or a Discord message. Um, okay. I'm going to erase this. Erase it. I will, I will. Okay, I'm just not helping at all. So by changing the displays, I have ruined everything, have I not? Uh, yeah. Should I, I wanted to do that. I'll we'll just close out right here. We'll Which? just do this, this one. Let's just do what we had before for right now. No, but it's still, it's still putting it on that screen. Yeah, I'm just thinking if we go back to what we were before, maybe it'll revert itself. Um, possibly. Did you do anything different besides change it to no longer mirror us? I changed the ordering of the screen. Like, I, I'm not surprised that it got messed up, honestly, thinking about it, but I, I'll, I'll have to mess with it more. All right, so what should we do from here? So we should pick problems, and then the other person should be seeing how it goes. Okay. Uh, I, I'll, I was dealing with the display stuff before, so I can try that again. Okay. Let's do another question. I don't think we have any Discord questions. Seems like we don't. I'm gonna pull up Reddit or something like that. Yeah. What did you teach today? This afternoon. Percentages like 1.25 means increase it by 25%. Oh, that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that now? You're if you have work, shouldn't you be doing quant work around Renaissance Technologies or the big hedge funds? Who us um, or just one that is from New York? That's what everybody in New York is doing, bro. Quant work at Renaissance Technologies. Yeah, actually, I think it's something like 67% of people in New York uh, do quant work at Renaissance, Te Renaissance Technologies. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. Um, but I've also heard it's much more than that. Other big hedge funds. Ro Roby Expert. I mean, I don't know. That maybe. sounds like the worst thing I could possibly do. I would hate that. Depends what your goals are, Roby. If you want to make a lot of money, what we're doing is not really doing that, so... If you want to make a lot of money, that sounds like a good goal. But, um, you know, there's a lot of different people, and a lot of different people do a lot of different things. You'll sacrifice. That's what they all say. That's what they all say. And then they get caught up in the game. And mm -hmm. it's never enough. They always want more. They're making so much money, but it's still not enough because John down the street has more money. Hate that guy. John down the street is actually a really nice guy, which yeah. makes you even hate him more. And it's confusing because his name is John down the street, but he's upstairs. I know. And that's always. Is it John John, John da uh, down the street? Is that is that like Dutch or something? I've never heard that. Oh. But I think it's probably Dutch. Most things are Dutch that aren't not. Is Roby in school? What's Roby? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Roby, what are you? Are you in school? Are you in high school? Are you in college? Are you after college? What 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 are you doing? What's going on? What's your deal, Roby? Quant work at Renaissance Technology or other big funds hedge today. Someday I'll work there. Someday those quant workers will work for me. <laughs> Masters in CS. Ah, of course. Of course. Well, you have the wherewithal to probably work at a hedge fund and crush it in general. I, on the other hand... My father was a hedge fund. He was, was he? Yeah. You work at him? Yep. Mm. Yeah, you should try to yeah. you should figure something out here. Yeah? Pull up a question, huh? I'm pulling up a question for you, Bird. Wait, but I can't. It doesn't even matter. Actually, how about the one with the K and the X and all that stuff? 
Let's just do this. Oh! That's quite the idea, Levi. There you go. Okay. So I got that guy. I have now followed whatever stupid link that was. Make it full screen. Pull up Reddit. Monmouth University. Great. Bring up the question you want me to do. Make it nasty. Make it nasty. Drop top, stop, 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 stop. Make it nasty. Word. All right, we're going to do this guy. Make this big. That's so ugly. It's fine. Whatever. Wait, what do you want to do? It's fine. I don't like Fit, it. Get so. rid of the window on this one. The top window, the tall, the top small window. I don't know how that happened. I don't know what this is. I have no idea what this is. Get out of it then. Good. And make that big. Now pull up this. Yeah, that's what we do, Ruby. Ruby, we do that. Big time. It's a great idea. We didn't do that just now, though, did we? Yeah, because I'm going to do it in a sec, because we're doing other more important things. Right. And these are questions that have been answered. I mean, you should, you can, you know, crop it on this. It I know, matter. but it's super giant in your face, so, like, on the actual screen. Oh. Which I don't like. Um. So what are you going to do about it? I'm going to fight it. What are you going I'm to do? I'm going to put it right here. Big actually. boy. Uh, can you deal with that? We, I mean, the reflection's not bad. It's it's ideal. Yeah. All right. All right. Are you okay? Are you yeah. okay with this? Cool. K is equal to x squared minus 5x in the equation above. For how many integers x is the number k negative? Let's see about this. All right. X squared minus 5x, which is a quadratic. Let me think about this. For how many answers x is the number k negative? Interesting. All right, well, if I'm going to solve the quadratic, uh, usually you got to put it in standard form first. So I'm going to move this k over. So I'm going to have 0 is equal to x squared minus 5x minus k. OK. OK, interesting. Did we just get something? Hey, Haley. Hey, young man, thank you for the follow. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Levi and I were just talking about how we wished Haley99 followed us. And now we have. Thank you, Haley. Thank you. Uh, how many years X is the number K negative? OK. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. So we can only have integer values of X. How many of them make K negative? If this is the case and I'd want to solve this, I would either factor or I would use the quadratic formula. Hmm. All right, well, factoring would be difficult because k is what they have to multiply to, negative k, and that's not really going to help us. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a quadratic formula. So a is equal to 1, b is equal to negative 5, c is equal to negative k. Not k, negative k, because we're subtracting it. So x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4a negative kc all over 2a 5 plus or minus and this is what x is equal to um, okay so this is going to be 25 plus 4k all of that is over 2 and um, <clears throat> Interesting. Levi. <clears throat> yes, Bert. Come on up here. Oh, okay. Did I give you a really hard problem? I did not mean to, my lord. In the equation above, how many integers x... For how many? ...is the number k negative? I, I could just start trying integers out. So... How many integers? Oh, oh, Wait, oh, you know what? Is this uh, the discriminant thing? Um, no, I see what's going on here. Okay. So you don't need me. I don't need you. You Sorry. just needed my, my support. Yes. Yes. And you have it. Thank you, my lord. And my sword. Ha-ha! My shield. Fight the interval. 
Yes. Yes, Ruby expert, that's what I just realized, uh, is that I just think of this as a parabola. Where does it dip below the x-axis? All right, so if we have y is equal to x squared minus 5x, that would be x times x minus 5. We'd have 0 at 0, and we have a 0 at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 5. And this parabola thing, bam, would go like this. It's a parabola thing, listen to me, jeez. Um, and we figure out how many uh, x values make the output of this thing negative. Um, so at 0, the y value is 0, so it's not negative yet. At, at 5, the y value is uh, still 0, so it's not negative yet. It's these ones here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. These x values, when plugged in, will spit out a negative y value at you, which in this case is your k value. k is your y value. Um, so just to show you what that would look like, you put 1 in here, and you're going to have 1 times 1 minus 5, which is going to get you 1 times negative 4, so that's negative 4. So that's what the k coordinate would be in this case. It's kind of like uh, a system of equations. You're finding the intersection point where you've got some horizontal line, y equals k, and you have this parabola, which is y is equal to x squared minus 5x. And so to find the intersection point, you would set them equal to each other, but we want x values where the y value of the intersection point would be negative. And so these x values give us an intersection point uh, that will be negative, because the y values of the parabola go underneath here. They're below the x-axis. Let me make sure that this is the x-axis. And that's the y-axis. Um, yeah, interesting. Where was I going with that? Well, when I was doing would work, we would just want the whole, we want k to end up being negative, which I'm not really sure that would not really help us. Or I, I'm not really sure exactly how I would use what I did with the quadratic formula. Um, anyway, yeah, that's, that's something. That's something. Um, yes, Roby expert, your approach here is exactly right. Levi, yes, sir. would you like to do a question? Mm -hmm. I think you should. I think you should do a question. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, jeez, this is a disaster. I have a blockhead. Uh-oh. Let me get rid of that for you. Oh. I was having fun with that. Where are you? Looks like there's nothing to report here. Although I haven't actually looked in the ACT Discord. Let's do that real quick. Ooh, this looks fun, maybe. Yeah. Should be fun for you. I actually can't see that at all. Okay, we got a question for ourselves here. Is that big enough? It looks okay. No, we don't need that anymore. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, I'm gonna erase this as I read this. We're doing number seven. This person needs help with number seven. Hey, Bird, can you link this on the Discord? Um, number seven on the ACT English. What do you mean? Or ACT English channel. Okay, wait, and oh, Just tell them to watch our stream? Well, uh, link this, you know, link the video with the timestamp like we normally do. Okay. Onto the Discord, not onto Reddit. Yeah, yeah, that's where it is. Let me know when you find it. Um, okay, so let's read this sentence. This is too small. I cannot see. Let's try that. Maybe I can see it better. Oh, you know what? We don't need that at all. So let's do that. Probably don't need this at all. All right, so ACT English, number seven, right? 
Yes, you see it? Posted yesterday? I don't know. Probably. Okay, so this sentence we have, they also tested what they referred to as the pedometer hypothesis. That's our sentence. We're deciding where to put some commas. So, people get ugly with commas because they're not they stop using rules. There are rules for commas. I think this is actually one of the hardest questions, though, because this has to do with quotes, which can go either way sometimes. So let's see if we can eliminate any really bad answers. Um, so sometimes there are commas before quotes, so I want to ignore those. Let's start with B. B has a comma before the word to. So we have, they also tested what, was, what they referred to as pedometer hypothesis. That sounds terrible, but I'm, I'm gonna go through. There are four uses of commas. Let's see if any of them are used here. So, number one is listing. Do we have that here? Certainly not, that's not a listing comma. Two is comma fanboys. Not comma fanboys, because after we have the word two, that's not in fanboys. Three, we have DC comma IC. We don't have an IC after this comma in B because we have two as the pedometer by hypothesis. No way, so it has to be a non-essential. Well, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, we, ha we have to see, okay, are there two commas? No, there's just one comma. So the non-essential has to be everything before or everything after. Hello stream, Uzvo, sorry. I, I did not see you there. Uh-oh, that's just in the way. Sorry, we're going to put it down here. All right. Uzvo, didn't see you. Um, I, thinking of non-essential, that means we have independent clause and then a non-essential, or non-essential, then independent clause. I don't like either of those here. If we have the IC before, we have they also tested what they referred I don't like that as, a non, as an independent clause, but it's certainly not a non-essential. We need both sides on this comma, so it can't be a non-essential. We have gone through all four uses of commas, and it's not any of them, so B is wrong. You can do the same thing with C, the same situation is there. Then we get to D. Now, this is where commas can get a little bit more difficult. I I generally leave this type of comma usage for the very last thing to talk about with commas because it's a very uncommon question, which is when they have commas and quotes. We are used to saying something like, she, and then he said, comma, hello, bird, or something. So you can put a comma to set up quotes. You put a comma at the end of quotes, as long as the sentence isn't ending. But you don't always need to set them up that way. Um, teach you how to comma, please. Yes, too many commas there, Usfo. Do you know these four uses of commas? Are you comfortable with these? Do you know what DCIC stands for? Do you know what comma fanboy stands for? Do you know all the types of non-essentials? Let me know. We can do more commas questions if you would like. Um, so here, we have a comma before the quote or no comma before the quote. As you probably figured out, you do not need a comma before the quote in this case. It's referred to as the pedometer hypothesis. That's not a quote, that, there, that, uh, blah, 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 blah. the pedometer hypothesis is in quotes, but it's not what somebody is saying, right? If you say, I said, hello, world, or something, yeah. If we say that, I would put the comma here. You can sort of think about this as a non-essential. I said, that's my independent clause. Here's what I said. Rather than what they have in this case, which is clearly not non-essential. They referred to it as something, right? So they're giving it a name by putting it in quotes. They could have underlined it, although obviously they're never going to underline anything in the English section or writing section because that would be super misleading if they underline the actual text. Um, so in this case, they put it in quotes. Just because something is in quotes doesn't mean you need to offset it with a comma, okay? Approach it like a non-essential thing, but if you didn't have quotes there, would you put a comma? Certainly not. They referred to, or what they referred to as 
the pedometer hypothesis. You do not need a comma there. That's a hard question, for sure. Very uncommon, so you don't have to worry too much. Uswo, um, you just, oh, jerk lump, hello. What does DC comma IC stand for? Okay, DC comma IC. Um, direct something, indirect something. Uh, no, not quite that. Um, DC stands for dependent clause. Ooh, I need to write up the times again. Dependent clause. And then we have IC, which is independent clause. IC is way more important of a topic, of a concept. That's the big guy right there. Independent clauses, or clauses in general, have a subject and they have a verb. Okay? Subject and verb. So, I said. That is technically a clause. I is the subject, verb, or said is the verb. So independent clauses have that. So do dependent clauses. They both have subjects and they both have verbs. But the thing that independent clauses have, or are, is that they are complete thoughts. So, let's take this example. Let's say um, I walk to school. Is that a clause? Does it have a subject and verb? I is our subject. This is our subject. This is our verb. Most people at this point in high school are able to recognize those, and you definitely need to be able to, but that's not quite enough to make it an independent clause. Do we have a complete thought here? I walk to school. Yeah, we do. It's, it's a complete thought, for sure. Um, but that only makes it an independent clause. Is it a dependent clause? No, it, it doesn't depend on other stuff. So this is the weird thing about dependent clauses. Depends on something else. For example, if we put the word as, just a very simple word as, so now we have as I walk to school, we have lost our independence, okay? Um, let me get out, okay, good. We've lost the independent part because we need something else. As I walk to school, that is not a complete thought. That is, as I walk to school, something's got to happen. As I walk to school, I call my mom on the phone or um, I talk to my friend or something like that. That's what's going on as I walk to school. So DC comma IC are these two put next to each other. So as I walk to school, as I just said, let's uh, get some of this out of the way. As I walk to school, I hum, I guess. I'll do it, yeah. I hum to myself. So this now, right here, is our DC. Then we have a comma. Then we have our IC. Let me erase some of this. Please let me know if you have any follow-up questions on this. This is one of the four uses of commas, and it is super important. It is actually, though, in my opinion, the least important thing to understand about commas. Non-essentials are the most important. Listing is probably the easiest. That's you know the most common or the most simple use of commas that you see. And the most common thing you see on the test is non-essentials. I want to say it this way. Listing commas are the most common thing to recognize easily. Non-essentials commas are the most common by so, so much. So I take back what I said. Uspo, do you have any tips or ever have discussions regarding the fact that the SAT is a marathon and the most wrong answers come from the mistakes or lapses in focus rather than actually not knowing the answers? Um, do I have any tips regarding that? Yes, I do. Um, and uh, discussions... Like with my students, sure. Um, Brady and I have discussed that before. Yeah, together. Not entirely sure. Well, oh, free my lord. About what, sir? Uh, about the number three. Oh, very good, sir. 
Let's find some more questions. Unless, Uspo, do you have more questions on this? We can do math. We can stick with this if you're not fully comfortable with these four ways of using commas. It is up to you. It's so entirely up to you, it's crazy. But if you don't answer, then it's up to me. And you probably won't like that. My fingers feel weird, Brady. Why? I don't know exactly. I think they're like catching on this microfiber cloth. That's good, you want that. No, what if they come off? You don't know that. I know, that's why I'm saying, what if, my lord? Ah, of course. Well done. Okay, so Uso is not answering that question of mine, which is fine. Oh, I want to hear about tips for not making mistakes and staying in the zone. Okay, so this is SAT. You're taking the SAT relatively soon, I assume, in October. Um, when you take the SAT, yes, you're right, it's a marathon. So, the way to deal with marathons is to take breaks. You're also assigned breaks for this current marathon, so that's nice. Um, but this is a marathon of the mind, Usvo, and thus you must take, take breaks in the opposite way, which means that you need to do physical things, okay? Your brain does not like having your body sit in a chair and do stuff that you probably don't enjoy all that much for three, four hours, whatever you're there for. Um, the best way to combat this is to give yourself legitimate breaks when you're given them, which means move a lot. Do not stay in your chair. As soon as this, the testing section is done, get out of your chair, get out of the room. You need to give your brain a change of scenery and you need to shut it off, which means turning your body up to a higher level, which means running down the hallway, doing push-ups, jumping jacks. Maybe jumping jacks are the least weird, or like high knees or something, do that. Do uh, pull-ups in the bathroom, I don't, whatever. Get your blood flowing because, Lenify, what's up? Get your blood flowing because that is going to allow your brain to relax and then you'll hopefully be a little bit more refreshed when you come back to the test. Now, that doesn't help you for within each section. Within each section, if you need a break, if you feel like you're reading something a lot and it's just not clicking, maybe that question's just really hard. Maybe you're not, you're not losing focus or the, the challenging nature of the question is making you lose focus because you don't know the thing on which you need to focus. Skip that question. That might help. But if you are, and, and then come back to it later, if you have time. If, you, if it's not that and you just are losing focus very generally, then do something physical again. Don't get up, don't do push-ups, don't do anything like that. But um, I tell my students to hold themselves off their chairs if they need some sort of you know, stimulant to their brain that's not just mental. Do something physical, like clench your fists, release them, take a deep breath, um, don't be obnoxious, obnoxious with it, but do something like that. And if I, hey guys, can I ask you a, a quick log question? It's not that hard, but I forgot what to do after a certain point. Yes, Lenify, you absolutely can. Didn't Lenify ask us log questions before? Yes. Okay. I don't see a ton of, okay, I'm just gonna write this so that, mm, let me know if this is the wrong way. Lenify's on YouTube, by the way. So for those of you on Twitch and elsewhere, you don't see what they're saying. So I'm not sure about the order of operations here. Let me know if you like what I'm saying here. Three to the x plus two equals two to the one minus x. Is that the situation? Is that what we're doing, uh, Lenify? Um, while I wait on that, Usvo, do you have any focus? I remember the trouble saying focus after reading and the 15th passage. The 15th passage? Um, cool, so we'll get to that. Brady. Yes. Um, would you like to do this very hard maybe logs question? Yes. Lenify, how did you begin this? What were your first couple of steps? Veronica Taylor, what's the best way to prepare for the SAT? That's an enormous question. The best way to prepare is in what? Are you just, are you asking for a friend? Or are you asking for yourself? There are, there are tons and tons of steps to prepping for the SAT. It depends on where you are in that prep process. If you're nowhere, you've never taken it before, then we, we got a lot to talk about for sure. Um, Uspo, to finish up, I took the log of both sides, moved the exponent to the front. Okay. Log base what of both sides? Log base what of both sides? Log base 10 of both sides, probably. Yes. If you were to do that, 
Let me just finish up with Usfo. So, Usfo, um, those passages are really, really hard to stay focused, right? So what I would recommend, and it may not work for you, so you gotta, everything we tell you to do, you need to practice before you actually do it on test day because otherwise it's, it's just going to make it harder for you, most likely. Um, I recommend trying to approach the passages, especially towards the end, as m more scientifically. And what I mean by that, it's not a science passage necessarily, but read the questions first, then when you're reading the passages, you're, you're, you're pulling them apart and you're, you're looking at the, the structure of the passage more so than reading it like you read something for English class and then you just kind of get a sense of it. That's when losing focus really hurts you because you don't have the focus to internalize everything right away. So if you read the questions and then go to the passage, you can internalize things as you go and you're focused on a more logical, structural understanding versus a general complete understanding in the Gestalt. Gestalt is a weird... Okay, so for myself, I've taken the PSAT, but I'm not sure how to get started in the preparation process. Okay, um, Veronica, stay on for a sec. Brady, do you want to keep writing before you talk? Yeah, keep talking. Okay, so Veronica. Veronica's on Facebook, everybody. So those of you not on Facebook, there you go. Um, so you've taken the PSAT. You haven't taken anything else. This is what I would recommend. Take a practice SAT. They're on College Board. If you if you can't, I mean, just Google College Board practice SAT number one. It will it will come up. If you if you Google practice SAT number one, the practice SAT number one will come up. Take that test, score yourself, see where you have trouble. That so the first test should be to diagnose where your issues are, where your your high yield um, concepts are. So what do you need to study to increase your score the most? If you really struggle um, on the writing section, then that's where you should be focusing. Um, the writing section also, that's on the SAT, yes, SAT. Um, the writing section also responds very well to practice because it's a lot of rules. Um, more than half of it is just rule-based, which is really nice, about punctuation mainly. Um, so take that test as a diagnostic, and then when you're, once you've correct or you know, figured out all your wrong answers, Pay attention to the types of questions you're getting wrong. So obviously the writing questions for the math versus the mass, math versus the reading. But then within that, what types of questions are you getting wrong? So what I'm going to say right now might not make sense because you don't recognize these question types, but once you take the test and then you're looking at the actual questions, they will. So let's say you're on the reading and you say, okay, well, I, I realize I get these two part questions wrong where they say, here's the question, here's some answers. And then what line numbers tell you the answer to that previous question? A lot of people get one or both of those wrong. So there's a particular approach to those types. So it's that type of thing, identifying your high, high yield question types that you get wrong the most. And then you can work on those mainly and figure out and then after working on the, the high yield concept areas as much as possible, then you take another diagnostic test and see what your improvement is and then work according to that one. Um, do you have any follow-up questions on what I just said? Because there's so, so much information that you, you need to get through and you'll understand better, I think, once you've taken a first test. Um, from our perspective, what I would recommend, since we're free, is take a practice test, score it, and then send us screenshots of questions you got wrong. And we'll tell you, okay, this, this is this question type, and this is how you go through this one. This is the best approach for this type of question. The SAT is about question type approaches. That is how you improve, because the, the math section, it has a lot of concepts that stay the same. And the reading section, the concepts change. And the writing section, the concepts, you know, the context changes. But the rules are the same, and the question types remain the same. So you need to practice the question type approaches. That's the important thing with practicing for these tests. Um, so please ask me any follow-ups if you have them, because I know that was a ton of information, and you probably didn't internalize all of it. That's totally fine. Um, there is a lot more information that I could give you, um, but I recommend overall take a practice test, score it, see how you do, and then see what question types you're getting wrong. Come back here when we're streaming. I should actually write this up now. Um, we stream... Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at this time with Thurs. Is that good? Yeah. 7.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. I hope that's not too cut off. 
Yes, the question ph type philosophy is very useful. I will tell you why. It is because that is what we developed as tutors. Like, that's how you best teach something. Teaching something makes you really, really, really good at that thing. It's proprietary technology. Yes. We developed it from the ground up. Yes, types of questions. We own that idea. We own it. Uh, okay, Brady, you're up. All I'll right. <clears throat> so this is for Lenify. Lenify, you took the long way, um, which is going to get you the right answer as long as you keep your log properties solid and sound. So you took the log of both sides, which is going to be log base 10 here, uh, and you put the exponents out in front. Okay. What I did here is I distributed, basically kind of like foil, but I multiplied x and 2 by log base 10 of 3, and I got these two terms, did the same thing with this other side. I got all the terms that have x in them over to the same side, which is right here, and then I factored x out, and inside I have log base 10 of 3 plus log base 10 of 2. On the other side, I have this right here. Um, so as long as you keep simplifying using log rules, so like if we're adding two logs, that means we are multiplying inside the parentheses. If we're subtracting, it's division. And then I divided by this number here, so this became on the bottom up here. And then I did change of base here, um, which will get you log base six of two ninths. However, however, if you just were to split, well, that was awesome. I didn't know I could do it that way, much more simple. Exactly, yeah, so you see this right here. Yes, you break this apart. So just go backwards with exponent properties, um, which I'm sure you see that at this point. But 3 to the x plus 2 would be also 3 to the x times 3 squared. Because in this situation, the bases are the same, so we can add the exponents because we're multiplying the two terms together, which gives us 3 to the x plus 2. So basically, I just separated them instead. Uh, I did the same thing to the other side. You can see what happened. Uh, just some magical hand waving. And then you eventually get the same answer with far less work, which is exactly what, uh, what everyone put, everybody wants at the end of the day, is to work less. Is the math portion a generalization of everything we should have learned, or does it focus on certain parts, trigonometry, algebra? Uh, good question. Um, OK, so you're going to see pre-algebra, algebra, algebra 2, uh, geometry, and basic trig. Um, ACT is starting to throw in a tiny amount of pre-calc at the end, um, but you don't really need to be thinking about that. It's, you know, everything that you should have learned up to the end of geometry and algebra two, basically. Um, that is what it's going to test you on. Um, you know, again, expose yourself. Take one of these math sections uh, and see, you know, what it, what it tests you on. I mean, you'll get a sense of like, oh, yeah, okay, so these concepts, this kind con I got to know triangles, I got to know quadratic factoring. I mean, you know, it's... You can, we can talk about this all day, but, but when it comes down to it, just sit down at your desk in your house and have a test printed out or from a book and take it. And then you'll start getting the hang of things and you'll see what, what's what, basically, is what you'll see. Uh, okay, so that's good for Lenify. So I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this stuff. Mm, mm, mm. Lenify, thank you for the problem. A lot of fun. Yeah, everything you should have learned up to and not including pre-calc. You don't have to do anything past that or including that. Most of pre-calc. You don't need to do most of pre-calc. Heavy algebra and algebra 2 and geometry and basic trig. Basic, basic trig. Man, the trig is so basic all the time. I'm going to sneeze. Here we go. Here we go. Should I dab? I'm going to dab. Kids love dabbing. Here we go. Sneeze dab. Uh, wait. Sneeze is coming. Maybe not. No. Never mind. I was, was going to do like a sneeze into my, into the crook of my elbow. My elbow crook. Levi's an elbow crook, actually. A lot of you don't know that about him, but I do. What other questions do we have? What other questions do we have? Let's see. Remember, on our Discord, rip sneeze. I know, Usvo. The thing is, I got too excited to do it for you, and uh, I was talking about how I'm going to dab, and basically hubris was my undoing. I flew too close to the sun, uh, as Icarus's father would tell you about what Icarus did. So I don't think Icarus told the story because his wings melted and he fell, plummeted into the ocean. And a fall from that kind of a height. I mean, ocean, the water is going to be like concrete if you're falling from the sky. Uh, 
So anyway, that's your gruesome physics lesson for the day. Um, any other questions we have on the SAT? Let's see. Anything in math? Let's see if anything might be fun here. Is this one going to be fun? Um, find x such that that plus that plus that equals 0. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't look fun. Therefore, it shan't be done. Which means it shall not. For all of you wizards out there. Let's see, ACT math, what we got here? Oh, all right, yeah, well, why not? Shallant. <laughs> Shallant, yeah, right. Uso, you're on fire. Someone's got to extinguish you with some type of a fire extinguisher. Levi, how we doing? Pretty cool. You we're doing cool? We're doing very cool. Good. Yeah. I didn't realize cool was a thing we can do. Is there an actual difference between SAT and ACT? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, you think that, the, like, uh, yes, there are. There's, the spelling there's... is the major difference. <laughs> one has a C in it, one has an S in it. Yeah, okay. It, it, it tests the same content, if that's what you're asking, with very, very few exceptions. Uh, it tests the same concept. Um, right, so certain students, like, here's an example. The SAT, half of the composite is math. You know, it's 800 out of 1600. Um, for, the, for the ACT, math is only one quarter of your composite because they average the four scores together. So if you're a very strong math student, the SAT is a very good test for you. And if you're not, the ACT is probably a better test for you. What matters is the percentile scores. That's what colleges really care about. Colleges will accept either the ACT or the SAT. So what you need to do is figure out which test is better for you. Which test does, do you score higher on um, when compared to the other test? Now, uh, you're going to have to take both tests. I mean, practice tests, obviously. Don't go in there and take No, it them. is not. It's out of 1,600 now. Yeah, it's out of 1,600. Yeah, that was a question. Yeah. Um, yeah, they changed it in 2016. They made the test a little simpler. They made it to, re to resemble the ACT a little bit more. Uh, the sections are... Less numerous. Jerk lump. The SAT used to jump around, like reading one, math one, reading two, math two. It, it's yeah. crazy. But now it's all kind of self-contained. There's four sections. There's a reading section, a grammar section, math no calculator, and math calculator. Where did my head go? My head it's is gone. Gone, Brady. Yes. Um, yep. Can you check your phone? Why? Because um, I sent you something. Am I going to like it? No. It's really? not that bad. But it's kind of bad. It can't be bad for you. It can only be bad for me. Uh, okay. So this is a matrix question. Jerk lump, are you still here? Can you say hi? Uh, I'll do this probably regardless, but um, I'd prefer it if you were here. Are we talking calc? Yeah. Dude, that's like half a calc. I know. <laughs> there are specific questions. <laughs> my phone. Can you pass me my phone? <laughs> can you push this kid off till tomorrow? <laughs> no. I mean, I'm down to do this. Like, I can end early. Okay. Yeah. Might have to. Okay. Um, I mean, it's still. Do we have Usvo? No, we have Usvo. We still don't have Jerk Lump. I'm probably gonna do this. Um, so Brady, can you? It's those problems in the online textbook in on my computer. Where's your? In computer? the other room. In your room. Okay. Yeah. And I will do this. I appreciate it, by the way. Um, OK, so four matrices are given below. Great. And they all have different sizes. So w is 2 by 2, x is 2 by 2, y is 2 by 3, and z is 3 by 2. So which of the following matrix products is undefined? OK, multiplying matrices is the, by far the hardest thing about matrices. It's basically the only hard thing about matrices. The way you multiply matrices is how you're going to do this problem. We're going to check f first, because f is nice and simple. f is w times x. So we're going to have 1, 2, 5, 8 times 3, 9, 7, 4. 
Okay, we're multiplying these two together. The way I want you to multiply matrices is you move the first one down, or you move the second one up, and the order does matter. This times this is not equal to this times this, most likely. So we're going to move this guy down. So we'll end up with 1, 2, 5, 8. Then we're going to have the second guy here, 3, 9, 7, 4. I don't know. You gotta, I'll take a picture. Okay. Is my computer not on now? It's on. OK. Cool. Yeah, it's your phone closed up. All right. Um, so to multiply these together to get the result, we're going to be going down or across the first column, down the first row, to give us the first piece here, OK? It'll be that row and that column. And I'll tell you what we're doing. We're going to do 1 times 3 plus, it'll be 1 times 3 plus 2 times 7. That is how you multiply matrices. You go, you go across the row and down the column that corresponds with this point here. Okay, so this is first row of the resulting matrix and the first column. First row, first column. So 1 times 3 plus 2 times 7. Jerk lump. That is complicated. That's right. Brady is going away for now. He'll be back in just a couple minutes, most likely. Um, it is complicated, but visualizing it helps a ton. So we're going acro across and down to get this point. Okay, three, 1 times 3 is 3, plus 14 is 17. So this point here is 17. Okay, now this next point right here, we are still in the same row, right? So we're still doing 1 and 2, but now we're in the second column. We're here. So we're going to do 1 times 9, sorry, 1 times 9 plus 2 times 4. The first and the first, the second and the second. 2 times 4. Okay? Jerk lump, are you with me so far? I know this is very complicated. So this is 1 times 9 is 9, plus 8 is 17 also. Oh, interesting. Um, so now we've done the first row. Good, I'm glad you're with me so far. Now, this point right here, it's going to, we've moved down to the second column, sorry, second row, and moved back to the first column. So we will do 5 times 3 plus 8 times 7. 5 times 3 plus 8 times 7. 15 plus 56 is 71, I want to say. And then we do the same thing for the last piece, OK? So that is the general way of, that, that is the only way to multiply matrices. You go across the rows and down the columns. I like setting it up like this, where you move the second one up above the first one so that you can visually do it. It makes it so much easier. So, so, so much easier. Now. We need to see if we're allowed to do this. It seems like we can for this one. This is w times x. It's answer choice f. We are allowed to do that, so it's, it's not the right answer, because this is defined. It will be this and then whatever that last piece is of this resulting matrix. Now, let's go to w, y. Um, if we're doing that, w, y is going to be a, a nice thing, too. So we have 1, 2, 5, 8. How is that looking, Brady? I mean, I, I, you're going to have to stop there. I mean, when was the last time you saw that stuff? High school. You should not have done this. You're not going to, I mean. Yeah, I figured. Couldn't be helped, though. Um, so what we're doing here, uh, we have w times y. So y is 1, 3, 7, 4, 2, 6. Now we're multiplying these. These aren't the same size. But the approach is still the same. And now I guess I'm inverting my colors. You know, I'll do blue. Jerk lump, tell me at any point if you're confused. So this first spot here, first row and first column. I hope you can see that. 1 times 1 here and here, plus 2 times 4. So that will be 1 plus 8, which is 9. OK? And then this spot right here, we have 1 times 3 plus 2 times 2 which is 7. And we just keep going, right? So this is also going to work. We're going to get a 2 by 3 matrix this time, because we go all the way to the third column over here. And that's OK. When it doesn't work is if you're not allowed to do that first one. There's something that will go wrong. So let's find the wrong answer. Y, Z, no, that's fine. X, W, that's also fine. So it's got to be X, Z. 
So let's do xz real quick, or let's begin to try to do it. And then we actually have to head out early. Brady, are you good to be done at quarter off? Uh, I would say if you're serious about turning the game tonight, end ASAP. Okay. So this one, we're going to do xz. So xz equals 3, 9, 7, 4. And up here, we have z, which is 5, 2, 3, 8, 9, 7. Sorry if there is a lot of squeaking. Hi, here in the moment. Hey, just so you know, we're, we're heading out early, like in the next couple minutes tonight. So you missed us, unfortunately, but hopefully you have questions and you can ask them tomorrow and we'll answer them. So now we're going to start this guy. First spot is always going to be first row and first column. So let's start. We have three times five. So that guy and that guy. And then we have nine times two, this guy and this guy, right? First and first, second and second, plus nine times two. And then we just have this three hanging out. It's got nothing to multiply with, right? So scammed, what are we saying scammed for? You're fine. Um, so this three has nothing to go with. Because it has nothing to go with, you cannot do this, okay? There are other ways to compare the, the number of rows and the number of columns. That's easy to forget. I recommend setting up the multiplication and then trying it. If this first point works, you can do the multiplication. If it doesn't, you're going to have an undefined result. You can't, you can't do this. You have three times five, nine times two, three times nothing. So you can't do it. This doesn't work. So xz is your answer because you are not allowed to do that multiplication. Good. I'm glad you got it now. Um, we will be back tomorrow and be doing a full stream, but right now we got to head out. So have a lovely night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Please come back with your questions and more tests that you've done. What am I supposed to do with my free time? Oh, man. You should... Learn how to do the yo-yo. It's going to be back. Yo-yo. Yo-yo. Brady says it's coming back. Yo-yo. Well, that's what a yo-yo does. <laughs> Very good, Brady. Uh, good night, everybody.